Welcome back. Now we're going to move on to epithelial tissues. So again, I'm going to be helping you come up with just a quick summary that you can fit on that quarter piece of paper there. So let's talk about where we would find epithelial tissue. You can pretty much find epithelial tissue covering and lining just about everything. So from the surface of the skin to that tube that goes through your body to the lining of your lungs, the surfaces of organs, you're going to find epithelial tissue all over the place. So it's going to cover and line just about everything. When we look at epithelial tissue, we always have two surfaces. So there's going to be kind of a basement membrane. And you're going to have an exposed surface. So if I have cells up here, and that surface may have things sticking off of it, that surface that's exposed is called the apical surface. Because we have an exposed surface, we're going to constantly be losing epithelial cells and having to regenerate those. So we're going to use stem cells to replace them. We're going to classify epithelial tissue by two means, which are the number of layers and the cell shape. So let's just hit some of our really common tissue types for epithelial. We can have simple squamous. So these are flat cells. And because they're nice and flat and thin, it's fairly easy for me to move stuff across those cells. So these are good for diffusion and filtration. So we're going to find these in places like your capillaries, so I can do lots of exchange, or the alveoli of the lungs. If I have simple column or simple cuboidal, then I have boxy little cells. So these are going to be particularly good at secreting things. We can also use them for some filtration, but they're really good at secreting. So these are going to be found in places like glands where I need to do lots of secretions. There are two main types of glands. You can have endocrine glands. These are going to produce hormones. And those hormones are going to be dumped into the blood. Or we can have exocrine glands which are pretty much the, all the other secretions, like sweat, tears, oil, etc. And those are going to be secreted out through ducts. Now we can have tall skinny cells that look like tall columns. So these are going to be columnar. And if we have a single layer, simple columnar. Now simple columnar could have little projections that help increase surface area. So they're going to be good for absorption. Or we could have big tall projections, which can wave back and forth and help to move stuff across the surface. So where I'm going to have each of those is going to depend on what the job is. So 
if I have these little structures that increase surface area, those are called microvilli, and those would be found in the small intestine, so I can absorb nutrients. And these projections here that wave back and forth are called cilia, and those would be places where I need to move stuff across the surface of the cell. So in the female reproductive tract, so that I can help kind of move the egg down from the ovary to the uterus, or in the upper respiratory tract, or to help move cerebral spinal fluid, ignore that, cerebral spinal fluid, which helps to keep that fluid moving around the brain and spinal cord. Kind of like moving water in a bathtub. Now I can have stratified epithelium of any of these types. So I can have stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, or stratified columnar, or I can have pseudo-stratified pseudo columnar. So let's take a quick look at stratified squamous. We're going to have multiple layers of flat cells. So rather than being good at absorbing things, we're going to be good at keeping stuff out or keeping stuff in. So this is really good for protection. Now most people think about stratified squamous being on the skin, but what I like to think is it's on the skin and then it folds into your openings. So rather than memorizing a long list of places you would find stratified squamous, if you can remember skin and folding into the openings, you can figure them out. It's going to go into the beginning of my nasal passages, into my oral cavity and all the way down my esophagus, into the outer part of my ear canal, um, into the vaginal opening and into the rectum to help deal with any abrasion. So this is going to be found in skin and folding into the openings. I can have stratified cuboidal Now, if regular cuboidal is really good at secreting stuff, I like to think of them like little boxy water balloons that can squirt stuff out. Then if I have a whole bunch of water balloons together, I can squirt lots of stuff out. So we actually don't find stratified cuboidal in very many places, but a really good example would be the mammary glands where I'm going to make milk. And these glands can produce massive quantities of milk. We're talking six to eight ounces of milk every time a baby feeds, which is less than every two hours. So it can be quite a lot. Now stratified columnar we don't really see very often. Pseudo stratified columnar is really basically simple columnar that looks stratified. So that's why it says pseudo because it's kind of fake stratified. And that's where I'm going to tend to find um, these cilia on the surface. The last kind is transitional. Transitional is what it sounds like. I'm transitioning from one cell type into another. This epithelium is very stretchy. So we're going to find it lining the urinary bladder because that's a structure that has to stretch and expand and then contract back multiple times a day. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of slides here. So remember, it covers and lines everything. It's going to make up your glands. You always have that apical surface, which is that free surface, and that basement membrane anchoring it. Epithelial tissue tends to be avascular. A means without, so we do not have vascularization or blood vessels going to these tissues directly. 
So we're going to have to have diffusion of nutrients from underlying tissues. Because we're dealing with abrasion, we have to have rapid cell division, which means that injuries tend to heal pretty quickly in epithelial tissue, unlike a lot of connective tissue. And as we said before, we're going to classify it according to the shape of the cells and the number of layers. So it can either be squamous, cuboidal, or columnar, and either simple for a single layer or stratified for multiple layers. So as we said here, if we look at simple squamous, it's a nice thin layer up here. So it's going to be really easy for me to diffuse stuff across it. Cuboidal, really good at secreting. Columnar, we can have microvilli, which means these are going to be good at secreting, or sorry, absorbing nutrients. Or we can have cilia that are going to move back and forth, and that's going to help to take particles and kind of move them along in a different direction, like moving the egg towards the uterus, or move moving some particle you've breathed in that's kind of stuck on mucus now and kind of moving that up so that you can cough it out or sneeze it out. Stratified squamous, again, we're kind of keeping stuff in and keeping stuff out, so protection. And stratified cuboidal, we do not see in very many places, but the mammary glands are a good example because they tend to be very good at secreting. Stratified columnar is very rare, so we're not going to worry about that. Transitional, we get a kind of a variety of cell types in here, so it's very stretchy. As we mentioned before, endocrine and exocrine glands. Endocrine glands make hormones. This goes directly into the blood. Exocrine glands secrete stuff other than hormones, so sweat, tears, oil, earwax, milk, you get the idea. Now, it is important to distinguish between a secretion and an excretion. What we're talking about here are secretions. So I'm secreting something. The way to think of it is when I secrete something, it's something that I'm trying to produce, like milk or sweat or tears. When I am excreting something, I'm trying to get rid of something that's waste. So notice I don't have urine up here as an exocrine gland secretion because urine is something I'm excreting. It's waste. I'm getting rid of. Okay, and that's it for this video, and we'll come back and talk about connective tissue.